Are you into engineering and also kind of have a dream to design your own products? Me too! And in this series, I'm doing all the ideation, mechanical design, PCB design, branding, marketing, packaging, customer service, sales, compliance, and on and on, all while recording it for you here. This is the product I've been working on over the last nine months, my TMJ pen. It's basically a heated massager for jaw pain therapy. But as simple as it is in theory, it's crazy how much harder it is to push something past prototype and into real paying customers' hands, something I've never tried until now. And nothing represents the struggle more than the electronics, because before starting this journey, I barely touched circuits. But I'm happy to say that in this episode, we bring our PCB design past the finish line as we deal with redesigning it against failure modes. Basically, here's where our fully working prototype is right now. We have our vibration motor, which runs off the boost converter. We have our heating element powered by the battery along with the thermistor for sensing, both of which are driven by these MOSFETs. This, along with indicator LEDs, are all controlled by the microcontroller. And finally, we have all the battery management circuits, USB port connectors, buttons, all that kind of stuff. All put together, we have a fully functioning device. So what's actually stopping me from shipping this? Well, for context, the user is going to be using the metal tip to dig into their TMJ and surrounding muscle tissue. So you know it would be really bad if for some reason the heating element inside got stuck on, making this get too hot, and burn them. Yeah. After thinking about the lawsuits, I got real serious about taking another look at my circuit design so that after making a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand of these things, no one gets burned. Before we design a solution though, we need to figure out the potential failure modes that will cause this catastrophe. After thinking a bit and asking around on Reddit, here's what I got. Let's start with a big one. This little MOSFET right here. What happens when it fails short? That means that there's a short between source and drain. Uh-oh, that pulls the battery voltage to ground across the heating element, therefore burned. burned. Next, we've got the microcontroller to worry about. There's a chance that it crashes or breaks while pulling the gate pin high. Therefore, the heater is stuck on, therefore burned. burned. Another one is a thermistor failure. If the thermistor breaks and makes an open circuit, we'd be measuring 3.3 volts no matter the temperature. That means that the code will think it's always too cold, therefore the heater is stuck on, therefore burned. I had a really tough time writing this part of the script because it's so hard to explain the roundabout way that I got to my solution. My initial idea was to use a redundant transistor on the high side of the heater. Now this diagram is wrong since you'd need a P-channel FET, but you get the idea. Because hey, redundancy's good, right? To turn on the heater, I'd need to turn on both of the drivers, meaning one shorting wouldn't be an issue. But again, after making a fool of myself on Reddit, I realized that this was shit for two reasons. First of all, it doesn't account for the microcontroller failure. Second of all, I failed to think about why the MOSFETs would short in the first place. Usually, it's something like temperature or overvoltage, which could likely break both drivers anyway. The best solution would be some kind of thermal fuse, but I quickly toss that aside since one, I'm super space constrained and thermal fuses tend to be massive. Plus, they wouldn't sit on the PCB. I would have to wire it to the heating tip, which is a killer for assembly. And two, the thermal fuses I found were pretty much all made for high temperatures, and I want mine to trip closer to 50 degrees Celsius. But then I got an amazing tip. Some fella on Reddit told me about crowbar circuits. Basically, the idea is to use a component called a silicon rectifier diode, or SCR, to blow a fuse when we detect a failure. This was like a missing puzzle piece, exactly what I was looking for. But how would we actually detect a failure? His idea was to use a microcontroller to detect an unwanted short, and the microcontroller to turn on the diode. But again, that won't work if the microcontroller is the failure point. I had to make it independent. So here's what I came up with. I would use a comparator to blow a resettable fuse only when the thermistor reaches a set resistance associated with the 50 degrees Celsius mark. Also, instead of using an SCR, I'm using a triac, which is basically the same thing, but it can conduct current in both directions, except it's a little bit cheaper and more available. The only problem now is that it requires the thermistor to function, which is already a failure mode we talked about. Are you starting to understand why this is also annoying? My solution is just to use the microcontroller to detect when the thermistor is at a weird voltage, so when it's shorted or open-circuited. So now, if we look back at our failure modes, it takes a combination of a thermistor failure and a microcontroller failure to burn someone. Still possible, but extremely unlikely, in theory. Now, there's no way to know this works unless we test. 
It's totally possible that the triac blows before the fuse and isn't able to turn off the device, for example, or a million other things I can't think of. This is the fifth PCB version I've tested, and let me tell you, the nervousness before turning it on for the first time never gets better, especially this time since not everything worked on the first try. The reason was all the tiny 0406 resistor arrays that I added to my design. You see, before adding the thermal protection, the PCB was already almost impossible to route because of how tight it was, so now I had to create some space. I did this with smaller resistors put in arrays and combining the motor and heater drivers into one package. I've never soldered such tiny components, so they were causing me some problems, but after a few tries, I got a working board. Now, time for the real test. What will happen when we get too hot? To do this, I just turned on the heater, and when I measured over 50 degrees Celsius, I stuck the thermistor in. It took a couple seconds for the thermistor to get up to temperature, meanwhile my heart was beating. But when it did, BOOM! Everything shut off. Hallelujah! Guess what though, we're not even done. I'm still running my sloppy code I've been piling onto since day one. It's disgusting and takes up almost all the memory, so I can't even add all the safety features like a watchdog timer and error indication. Originally, I wrote my code to not use delays, but honestly, I'd rather just use the built-in PWM pins to control the motor, which will make writing nice indicator code with delays so much easier. And for button presses, I'll just use interrupts. I won't get into detail on the rewrite, but turns out I picked the wrong pins and hardware to let me do all that. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Okay, for now, I'll use the old code, but that means one last PCB design, and this time I mean it. I already have orders to fulfill, so I'm gonna be ordering a hundred of these new ones along with all the other components I need to build full devices. I didn't change much apart from making all the components smaller, picking new pins, and getting new LEDs with lenses on them. Next episode is gonna be huge. See ya.